today I'm here with not only two of the top pickleball players in the world, but one of the top most beloved families in the pickleball world as well. Ryla DeHart, a top 20 singles player and former pro tennis player, and Megan DeHart, formerly Megan Fudge, a top 10 singles player in the world and former top college tennis player, both of which have taken the pickleball world by storm with their high-level play, kindness, and approachability, and two adorable kids who they've taken with them on the road as they travel around the country playing pro pickleball. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. That was quite the introduction. I mean, I feel yeah. like a lot of pressure right now. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we're kind and approachable. That's good. I've set a high bar for you guys. This <laughs> yeah. So you guys are riding around the country in an RV playing tournaments. You were both high-level tennis players. You have two very adorable kids. You're both big advocates of the game. I want to get into all of that. Um, but let's start off with where you are now. Describe a day in the life of the DeHarts. Well, right now we are staying at a Cracker Barrel. So. <laughs> we're parked outside of Cracker Barrel. We're, uh, we're living in, in our RV. We uh, just get to travel around and find different spots that we want to train at. Or if somebody asks us to come out and like yesterday, someone asked us to come to Orlando, to Lake Nona and be like, hey, you want to practice there? We're like, sure, we can drive there. Um, so we we jump on uh, in our RV, head over to Orlando and um yeah, it just gives us so much flexibility. So we're training, we're getting ready. We have this is MLP week. So I'm super excited to kind of start competing on Thursday. And uh, that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. Actually, we're uh, in Daytona here after this yeah. and uh, practice over there. I'm going back to Orlando actually for a clinic tomorrow with my MLP team, the Chicago Slice. Uh, we're doing a clinic tomorrow to promote the team and and do that kind of stuff and then uh come back after that and just get ready for thursday so yeah we were homeschooling the kids this morning uh eating some cereal and just typical rv stuff you know typical rv stuff so, yeah we had an empty out last night that was eventful yeah <laughs> are you guys the homeschool teachers do you have a virtual assistant do you have a is there a homeschool online program how does that work for them Ah, great question. So we actually uh, um, have our kids enrolled in Florida Virtual School. It's a, basically a public school system. The kids are assigned to a teacher. They get on Zoom calls with their teacher once a month for their discussion-based assessments. And so we're not like, we're not making it up. Like, it's not like we're doing anything on the fly. Um, they give us the curriculum. It's online. We get on the computer. We access the lessons. Um, we print up all the worksheets. And then we submit those worksheets every week to the teacher to get graded. So, um, so yes, we are, we, we. Meg is the teacher. Meg is the teacher. And then we have, uh, we have, you know, they have teachers like yeah. Lily, our daughter, she's eight. She's in second grade and she has a teacher. And then our son is in kindergarten. He's six and he has a teacher. If we need them, you know, for help or whatever. Yeah. And they're the ones that do like the discussion based assessments with the kids every once in a while, just making sure we're on track and everything. And, yeah. But we have to submit like one assignment from each subject every week. And it's very, it's great. It's really flexible. It's actually called the Florida Virtual FLVS Flex Program because you can do it anytime, which right. makes it great for our lifestyle because we're constantly on the move. Yeah. Um, it works out pretty well for us. Yeah. And it kind of, um, we kind of knew about it from tennis because in tennis growing up, um, and even when we were coaching tennis, all our players, you know, had a hard time going to school in person because of their the tournament schedule and everything that was going on. So a lot of our players were in, were enrolled yeah. in Florida Virtual School. So we knew that it was an established program. It's not something that was kind of made up during COVID. It was, uh, yeah, it's, it's very... It's, a good, it's known to be a good program. Yeah. And a lot of uh, junior, competitive junior tennis players do Florida Virtual because right. it's so flexible and they can go to tournaments and all yeah. that. And it's, it's super important for them to get their schooling in. But the issue is they're also probably training themselves for the pro pickleball tour. I mean, what, what's the plan with that? You know, are you guys, are you guys shifting them only in the path of pickleball? Do you want them to try out tennis? Do you want them to try a little bit of everything? What, what in your hearts, where, where do you want their athletic careers to lie? Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, you know, I think as a coach, obviously like tennis is in my blood. I, I grew up playing tennis. We, we both did. So um, I started them in tennis. We started them in tennis. Um, I would say I probably did more of that just because I was still doing tennis lessons and stuff. So they would always come with me and just gave them a really good foundation. Um, I hope, I think they have some good strokes, um, which translates over well to pickleball. So that's what I told them. I still want them to do tennis. I think 
being a good tennis player is going to make you better in pickleball, in my opinion. Right. Um, I think it's easier to go from tennis to pickleball than vice versa. So I want them to still do tennis. Um, I, you know, if they want to be competitive with it, tennis or pickleball, I'm fine. Or, you know, even another sport. I, I've always been an advocate of playing a bunch of different sports when you're young. Yeah. Um, developing the athleticism and then you can play whatever sport you want. They played some basketball. I'm always throwing and catching the balls with them, doing football, baseball, everything. So I just want them to be good athletes and we want them to play a sport, you know, whatever sport they want to play competitively. And that'll, that'd be great. So you basically said, all right, honey, you should play tennis because it's going to get you good for pickleball. You heard that, I did kind of say that. that. Yeah. I guess you can quote me on that technically, but uh, cause our kids, cause pickleball, I mean, look, I'm a tennis guy, but, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Pickleball is probably more fun than tennis. You know, it's also easier it, There's a it, to get from point A to point B, point A being a starting point, point B being able to, like, rally and enjoy the game. It's, like, a big – that's a big gap, you know? And yeah. pickleball, that gap from point A to point B is a lot smaller. And so the kids can get out there and they can rally. They can already play points and they can – you know, they play doubles with some people, like, you know, three, four times their age. We, they played rec games already. That's just something they can't do in tennis. So it's just a lot more enjoyable for them. And, and that's fine. You know, it's just the nature of the sport. So, right. uh, so they love pickleball, you know, especially my son, JR. I mean, it's hard to get him to play tennis. Lily's likes tennis more and she actually wants to get out and play tennis, which I love. But, uh, but JR is like, no, I just want to play pickleball. Like, he loves pickleball. So he's more like his, his personality is more playful, you know? So so he doesn't, like many kids, like they don't want to sit out there and take lesson after lesson about technique and like learning how to serve or learning how to, the right grips and the right strokes, um, which tennis requires a bit more of. Um, so for him, you know, six-year-old boy who just wants to compete and play and run and, and have fun, um, pickleball is perfect because there is not much, you know, like we let him hit two hands on both sides and people are like, oh, you're going to change that. Well, like, honestly, like in pickleball, there's not that much technical instruction. It's like you can kind of figure it out wherever he wants to hit the ball to. He's going to figure it out. Like if he, if he needs one hand or two hands when he's on the run or when he's a stationary. And um, it's it's going to be more about like hitting his spots, hitting his targets to win the game. And I do think it's important, yeah. especially like playing singles. I think the better. I think a lot of the players that have better technique on the ground strokes are obviously better singles players. I mean, you can't deny that. So I think that stuff does play in there. But like Megan said, I think pickleball, if um, you can jump in there and if you're a good athlete, you can, you know, you can compete at a fairly high level, even though your strokes aren't technically, right. you know, uh, I guess you would say traditional, you know, sure, or what, sure. whatever traditional is for pickleball. So but, one more question about the the current life situation, like, you know, traveling around the country, playing tournaments, going from place to place, meeting new people, seeing new things. It, it kind of feels like a dream, you know? I mean, I would love to drop what I'm doing and go do that. What it, What's sort of the the roadmap of like, how long do you see yourself doing it? Is it going to depend on success on the tour? Is it whenever your kids just say, I need a real bed? Like what's, what, what sort of the future plans look like in terms of that? Yeah, I mean, like for us, it's been, um, we're very, very flexible and adaptable people. So um, we've moved so many times in the last 10 years together um, as a family because of Rylas Jobs. He was a college coach uh, for Alabama and then with FSU. And then we we moved for a national coaching job in USTA in Orlando. So we kind of, we had already had that feeling of like not necessarily being always in one place. And then with this pickable journey of ours that, kind of happened last year we're like okay we're never in this house that we pay for in Clearwater it's the most expensive dog house because any of our dogs live there basically right. and um and so we're like okay let's do this RV thing and so we can all be together and the kids get to see the country and they get to enjoy this journey with us while instead of me just flying off to tournaments let's go try this let's see how this works and so we never really we haven't really talked about the longevity of this of like whether yeah. this is like a two year plan or a five year plan or um or any of those things and and yes we we've committed to this year of this yeah. trying this out and like seeing how it works with the tour schedule because even the app tour or the ppa tour and the mlp mlp schedule it's kind of all over the country it's it's not it's hard to just like go one big circle around oh we're just going to follow the sun like we did we didn't we didn't tell us it's literally like we're bouncing back and forth. This week we're in Daytona. Next week we're in Arizona. Then we come back for Naples US Open. 
Then we go out to Sacramento. So some trips we also gonna have to fly to. So we have to figure out this year whether the RV life is what what works for yeah. us on the tour. I mean, um, some logistical challenges, obviously, but yeah. yeah. Who does the drive? Who does most of the driving? Do you split fifty fifty or? I mean, I would say he drives. Probably drive a little more. Yeah. Um, but I mean, Megan, like usually it's like motion sickness and cars and stuff. So like we thought I was gonna have to drive the whole time, but she actually is better in the RV. So like she's been driving um, yeah. some, and I've been actually able to drive. So that's been good. Yeah. So we can split it up. Um, I'm but not yeah, I mean, it. it's a big bus. No, you get used to it. Yeah, we've got, I know. we've gotten used to it. The parking and the and re you know reversing and stuff like that is can be challenging at times. But the driving, we've definitely gotten used to that. Um, I think this has been a really good entry level RV for us. It's only, yeah. I say only, um, a 29 foot RV. So yeah. it's like the smallest A class, they say. Um, so feet. it's under 30 feet. So you can maneuver. You sit really high. So you kind of see everything. Um, so I, I say entry level because I think if we did this more long term beyond like a year or two years, we would probably consider getting a bigger one so that the kids would have more space yeah. and, and and for us more space like our friends have one that's like a 39 it's like 42 40, 40, 40 40 i don't know if we get one <laughs> it's hard so, to find the value you want to have one that's like big enough to live in but at the same time it's you can park it at tournaments and stuff yeah. is nice so right. it's, it's to find that balance you know yeah it's, it's like the dipping your toe in rv it's not full-on rv life it's yeah. all right let's check it's it out enough. let's get it out Right. doing it this year probably doing it next year and then after that we're going to reevaluate um like megan said maybe we'll upgrade to a bigger one if we like it we you know we don't like i don't i personally don't i'd rather live like this like i don't really like being tied down to one place and having a bunch of stuff that you never use and having rooms in your house you never go into i i've never really saw the point of that so i'd rather have something I can take with me it just makes more sense to me it's more fit. we like things so. like we we and we're like, oh, how do you do it? 29 feet, like two kids, two dogs. Like, what are you doing? And we're like, we're never in here. Like, we, we, we sleep. We, this is where we sleep. And this is where we eat breakfast. But uh, after that, it's like, we're done with schoolwork. All right, we're out. <laughs> so we, uh, we, we get outside. We, we love hiking. We like being outdoors. Um, and now being on this journey, like, we just get to look for new different spots that we get to adventure yeah we went out to arizona for the mlp and drove it out there that was our first long trip it was like 30 hours out there but uh megan's mom was here too so we had like another person here and but it was cool because we went to we went on a bunch of hikes we went and saw the grand canyon we were yeah. in some snow in it and stuff like that so it was kind of a cool trip yeah. for us to go that's awesome so you both were top tennis players in the country riley you obviously played pro and you know, we see a lot of uh, tennis players switching over to pickleball. That's, you know, m you know, maybe the sport with the most players switching over. Um, and I'm kind of curious your thoughts on what are the reasons bringing most of them over? And then also what are the reasons holding some of them back? Yeah, great question. Um, I think tennis players are excited about this sport. I think they, they see the potential of like, this playful environment of comp still competing um, and while well, it's physically not as strenuous um, as tennis is on the court and and they could get to come over and uh, and and pickleball has this buzz right now you know when you think about MLP when you think about you know who's getting involved in an investment standpoint these tournaments these tours um, I mean you can also talk money I mean like I think you know the likes of Sam Query um, or Noah Rubin or anybody like that feels like they they can they can get in right now and get a pretty good contract to play pickleball um, and, uh, and, and be, you know, someone who's transitioning and be a good storyline for companies. So um, I think there's a little bit of that. And then from a standpoint of, of playing, I mean, you can talk about the transition from tennis to the past. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think I'm one of those people where, you know, it's given me like a second chance to compete at a really high level um, where I can go in and, having played a sport for like a year and a half, be competing with some of the best players in the world. I mean, that's pretty exciting. Um, giving me another chance to get out there. I, I cut my pro tennis career pretty short, um, playing about six years and, um, you know, having a chance to play again at my age, almost 40 has been really fun for me. So I think there's quite a few people like Megan said, physically um, singles obviously can be really demanding, but overall I think it's not as strenuous Um physically and there's not as many injuries and stuff like that it's a smaller court to cover and a, and a lighter paddle and ball and all that so 
Um, like Megan said too, there's before she said there's a lot of like people have shoulder arm injuries from tennis or whatever it is and not having to do a lot of the overhead stuff like serving and all that. Also, um, I think tennis players come over and they like that. I've there's been quite a few people that say I just can't serve anymore. Right. And so they they can feed that ball in like, you know, and, and play and they might not have a great overhead, but they can still compete. Um, but yeah, just, you know, and just having all these people that can now, you know, go out and, and they maybe couldn't really play tennis at a, a competitive level anymore, but they can get out there and play pickleball. Pickleball has the senior pro stuff, which I think is really cool. Um, tennis doesn't really have that. I mean, tennis has older age divisions. You can play USTA and stuff, but it's not the same as having a senior pro where right. you're over 50 and you can still make some money and you can, I mean, these right. people love that, you know, and that's, that's exciting for them to get in there and be able to do that. So I think a right. lot of those people are coming over. You're seeing a lot of, I think the other end of that age spectrum, you're seeing a lot of these kids now like Christian Alshon, James Inadowich, these kind of guys, they finished college tennis, you know, they're good college players, you know, maybe they're probably not good enough to really go out and make a living playing tennis. Cause it's just so tough. And they see the sport of pickleball and the buzz that's around it, like Megan said, and you can make some money out there. Um, and it's and sometimes pickleball is not even about, you know, it's about how good you are, obviously, but it's also about how you can market yourself and, um, you know, hitting the tweeners and doing all these different things and having a social media presence and all this stuff. You can make some money doing that. So these guys see that as a great opportunity where they can make more money playing a sport like pickleball that's more social and have more fun with it than going out and trying to play futures in mexico city and getting food poisoning you know like i did so uh, <laughs> but uh you know going through that grind made me better though so that's why i can still beat these young kids all right Don't forget that. you beat me yeah, okay. yeah that's right well that that was a tough one you got your forehand is nasty so. um lefty, right yeah. yeah yeah lefties let's go Lefty power. You know what? That's an interesting question. I didn't even have this written down, but you know, we, we played a match. You guys took care of business. Um, it was three set, three games though. Three, three games. Yeah, no, that was, we were surprised when we won that game. I was like, Oh my God, did we just win this game? You know, Matt and I, Matt, who runs a pickleball clinic um, with me and I, we play a bunch of doubles tournaments together. And honestly, the mindset we had when we realized we were playing you and Rob Cassidy was, holy shit, you know, we're playing these two top players. What do we do? And I, I think the reason why I ended up playing better than I thought was because I literally thought, you know, what the hell is just whatever happens, happens. Let me just swing for the moon. I played super aggressive. I sped up everything. And it just so happened that I was, you know, I put in a little work on Rob and, you know, it just, it, you know, it, 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 whatever happens, happens. But my question for you is if someone who is maybe a, a qualifier in a tournament or, you know, a low five Oh, that's, that's trying their hand at pro they see Ryla DeHart or Rob Cassidy or Zane Navratil or any, you know, big name player um, that they're about to go up against. What's the, how should they suit their minds to be able to actually have as great of a chance as possible? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think the tendency yeah. when, when players see those names, it's like they feel like they have to overplay. Like they have to become somebody else, right? I mean, they have to become like, they have to become the Ben John or they feel like they have to play this persona of somebody else and I think play better than their ability yeah and like it's like the, especially pickleball where we have to it's a game of errors I think the number one thing I would tell them like play within yourself like play at the at the level and at the speed and at the at the rate that you are most comfortable with and, and the most confident in because that's where you're going to stay in the point longer and that's where you and then look for your opportunities right I mean yes play loose you have no, nothing to lose like you know, enjoy the opportunity. Like this, this, this pressure is a privilege of playing these players, like all these things. But in the end, I'm like, my number one thing is be true to yourself. Like be you. Like I, that's, that's what I would say. Yeah. And, and like Megan said, I mean, you go out there and you play these players and you feel like you have to play way above your ability to beat them. And I don't think that's the case. I think pickleball is also like a big equalizer. I mean, you can get out there and make some dinks and, um, you know, you saw the Johns brothers got taken to three by, uh, those two guys, well, um, two Olivia's, yeah. Oh, no, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like they just, I saw some of that match, and they were just playing super solid. I think at the end of the day, they were making them beat, you know, they made the Johns brothers beat them. And you got to go out there and make your opponent beat you because they still got to come up with the goods at the end of the day. They got to beat you. Right. And pickleball is a great sport where, you you know, you can make some balls. You Like you, your lefty forehand, you can rip some balls. And it's like anything can happen, you know, and you got to go out there 
Um, like, you know, I've played some of these top players, JW, I, I beat him in singles. And when I think when I did that, you know, I was just like, all right, let's go make this kid play. I mean, he's still got to beat me. You know, he's still got to come up with the passing shot at, at 11, 10 in the third or whatever it is. I put that return in play. All right, let's see if you can make the pass, you know, and he, and he missed it. So it's like, just make those players play, play within yourself and anything can happen. You know, that's why we play. So, well, yeah. I love, I be careful with all the good advice. Next time I see you in a tournament, I might just go out. And I know, right? Yeah, don't don't use that to beat me though. Okay, <laughs> wait till I'm like fifty. All right, I will do. Um, uh, another a question going back real quick about the transition from tennis. If if both of you guys could redo your transition from tennis into pickleball and do one thing different, what would it be? Oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> so the first time we went out. I think um, we would be maybe more humble. I remember the first time we would go out, we went out um, to this club. Humble? I mean, like we got beat by these 60 year old guys, these yeah, two 60 year old guys. Well, we were humbled by them. We were humbled by them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we were, I mean, I don't think we were going out there like cocky, but yeah, you go out there and you're like, you're a, like, wait a minute, I just lost in a competitive sport to a 60 year old. Yeah. So yeah, I, just, like, I remember going into that match and we're like, oh, okay, like we're playing pickleball, like, but we're tennis players. And like that first time we were playing, I think just being aware of like there's there's a lot more to this game than what the eye can see yeah. from the outside or, or the, the un, unknown eye, I should say. Um, I think they think that's the best, you know, yeah. like being <laughs> up and missing too much. And, yeah. You know, so, so that's I, like the tennis player transition. I think for me, the transition was a little bit hard, a little bit easier because I kind of had a chip and charge this game style in tennis. So I had a slice forehand. Um, I, I liked being at the net. I, I played um, a lot of doubles growing up. I played squash actually growing up as well. Um, and so that helped me a little bit um, and the movement and just like the fle wrist flexibility side of things. Um, for Ryle, it was a little bit, was still a little bit harder, I'd say, because he had more of a, a grand stroke baseline game. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I like doubles. I played all four too. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think it depends on your tennis style too. Like if you were a baseliner, and didn't play doubles, obviously pickleball is going to be harder so to play you, doubles. So yeah, but, what would you change? Then? Yeah, what would I change? I mean, that's a tough question. I think I, I would say like not getting too stuck in the tennis mindset on a pickleball court, you know, and like I'm still trying to work on like, you know, it's funny we were playing yesterday and one of the guys was like, oh, I got to cover that. Your lefty volley goes over there every time. I was like, yeah, I know it does. And then I was like, I got to hit it that way sometimes, like right. misdirect, just doing those kind of things that some of these pickleball players are really good at where it's like they don't even have to hit the ball hard, but they just, you know, hit the ball the opposite direction or do these kind of things that are you just never do in tennis, you right. know, and it's like just getting out of your tennis brain and making things a little bit more weird on the pickleball court. You know, get weird out there. All right. Get weird. I'm going to give it a try. Um, so we're too, we're too clean sometimes, right? I mean, I've talked to Riley a little bit about it, like, and tennis players, when they come over, we're so clean and predictable because like, yeah, we open up our hips too early or the wrist is really showing too early. Where if you look at somebody like, you know, Rob Cassidy, you yeah, know, like, but, you know, the way he holds his paddle or, or Susanna Barr, like, it's hard to read their speed ups or their attacks um, because of their, their wrist position and their, their paddle position. And so I think more of that, I, yeah. I think I would have liked to have learned more of that earlier so that we can already be six months eight months into that phase yeah. whereas i feel like we've only started adapting to that yeah. recently yeah right um so moving on to another aspect um of, of your pickleball lives you guys don't just play singles and doubles you play mixed doubles and you play mixed doubles <laughs> with each other <laughs> let me keep lacing my shoe like this whole <laughs> he doesn't want to talk about that <laughs> uh, well then megan you can talk about it i i, I gotta <laughs> ask how is it um, playing mixed doubles with your significant other? So um, we, uh, we've we had a hard time with it, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> we've had a hard time with it to the point where we've made the decision, and it, I think it was on the news, actually, that we had it was the, on, uh, it was it was a, a pickleball <laughs> breakup. Um, we, you know, we're both... <laughs> we, uh, um, so, you know, like, I... I have a hard time because um, for one, it's like, we, this is all we've ever played. Like we've only always played mixed together. I've always only played on the left side and he's on the right. 
and we've always only learned from each other how to play mixed. And so um, it's been hard. Well, it's been really fun figuring things out together. I also felt like it was a good timing or a good time, you know, a good opportunity for us to to reach out to other players and play with other players to learn from them. Like uh, watching him play with Sarah Ansbury, who's a very, very experienced mixed player or pickleball player in general. That's a huge opportunity for him to kind of see what she does and see what she expects from him and, and wants from him. While at the same time, me watching Sarah take my role as such on that left side and seeing how she plays mixed versus watching tape on how I played mixed with Ryler, I wasn't setting him up well enough. You know, like I, I, I have more of an aggressive tendency in doubles and a mix, probably too, too aggressive for mix at this time um, for the game style that he wants or that he needs to be set up on. And so um, we're still playing through something together. We're playing some, we're going to play some tournaments here and there. <laughs> play Gamma Classic. Shout out to Gamma, yeah. our sponsor. Um, so we're going to play, so some, gonna play some together. But the it, highs are high, the lows are low. Yes. I would say in general, you know, it's like we know each other really well. So like I always tell her, I was like, just pretend I'm, you're playing with some random person. Yeah. Like, like be positive with me, but it's hard to do that, you know? And like, so sure. she gets really naked. I'm super positive. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. And and uh, I think it's just it's it's difficult playing with your spouse. I mean, I think any any couple will tell you that it's not easy. You got to take it home too. It's not like you can kind of like like you know get off the pickleball court and then like oh man that was a bad day. Like my partner was a little bit off. You know, like you'll come you home and be that. like yeah, like Megan, you were kind of off today, huh? You know, it's like so that doesn't really work. Yeah, um, we don't get to each other. Yeah. Like, so. So we just basically mutually decided. You can't like, blame it on your partner like you always do in doubles. <laughs> right. Um, so kidding. We just mutually decided. It's like, I think at least for the next time, you know, phase for us, for our learning phase, our learning curve, that we decided to to, to go with our partners uh, and mix doubles um, at the majority of events for the APP tour. I've, um, I've committed to play with Rob Nunnery, um, who I'm excited about. So I get to adapt and, and be on the right side uh, uh, in mix, which I'm like, I we just brought, talked about last night. Like it's something that I'm so excited about because I haven't had the opportunity to play that much right side mix. Um, but I know like, I want that. Like I, I want that opportunity to to learn, to grow, to adapt. And so that I can be seen as a well-rounded player rather than just a left side player. Because now in, in women's doubles, I've become more of a left side player this year. Um, on the APP tour, and I really enjoy that role. But in mixed doubles, I want to show my um, diversity there and show that I can adapt and, and learn that side as well. Um, so I'm super excited, and, and I'm excited for Ryler, and I've been recruiting partners for him. So I feel like I'm his number one recruiter and uh, his manager over here. So um, he's got some really good partners lined up. I'm uh, I'm actually a little bit worried. Um, so so, <laughs> so uh, it's going to be good. I'm, I, it's it's This is just... You know, pickleball, um, like we like to continue to like remind ourselves of like pickleball is just a means to our journey. You know, even RV life, like this is we didn't choose to get an RV because of pickleball. Yes, pickleball, you know, kind of presented that opportunity for us to do this thing and to get on this journey. But this is like this is our life. You know? <laughs> this, is, this is our life. I mean, like this is this is our family story of you know, being together, not just Ryla and I, but also our kids to, to go along this, you know, adventure um, through life. And, and there's so much more to it. Pickleball allows us to do this, um, but it's it's bigger than pickleball. And so we don't want an argument on the court or a pressure situation between us where we feel like we're just not figuring it out or like we're trying to push the envelope too much. Like, let's just pickleball on the court. Like, when we get off the court, we're like, we're phenomenal. Like, so, so why why add this pressure to us when we can just pick somebody else to play with? Absolutely. It is an open relationship. So. <laughs> That's what he's going to edit. Yeah. <laughs> that was my next question. Um, no, I, I totally know what you're saying. I mean, I think it's really, it's. I appreciate you guys giving us kind of a sneak peek into like how that situation transpired it's probably very different for different couples that play together but I, I I can see a lot of other couples resonating with with you know what's going on between you guys and everybody it's an old saying like mixing business with pleasure is is uh, never ends up as smooth as planned um and you're right like what you guys are doing together with pickleball it's not about playing mixed together it's it's building a life and a family and a story and a journey and whether you're on the mixed court or not um isn't going to make much of a difference it's kind of an interesting point of view because 
my partner, Matt, who's working right now, and I'm going to see him right after this. And we have our, our tennis and pickleball academy and the pickleball clinic together. We've played a lot of doubles together. We're still, we're signed up for the U.S. Open. We're playing some stuff together. But frankly, I, I think the same thing sometimes that he's going to, he's going to maybe see this. Um, and it's interesting because we've been good friends since middle school. He's one of my, one of my best friends in the world. And, uh, you know, the only real business partner I've ever had. And um, we play doubles together too. But I, I feel like sometimes I almost feel like it's 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 hard to fathom being super successful as close friends and having multiple businesses between us and being doubles partners. Um, because, you know, why why is it worth letting the doubles, you know, you know, the, the doubles right. stress come off the court when in the car? We want to be talking about friendship stuff or business stuff, but there's double yeah. stuff as well. Um, so, you know, yeah. like Mother said, we're still playing the U.S. Open. We'll see you guys there. But yeah, like, oh, yeah, you guys yeah. Like, uh, yeah, so you're talking about like your like your academy, and then he's like, "Why did you need to drop it? Five yeah. all in the third. Like, why would you do that? Yeah, you don't want that. Yeah, yeah. But, pressure and 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 well, you know, we say well, pickleball is supposed to be fun, right? But we're also extremely competitive people. Like you, whether we're playing like cards or whether we're playing Mario Kart or playing pickleball, we're extremely competitive people, and so. When we get in, in those situations, it just gets to be very heated. And, you know, like you guys as well. I mean, you just don't want to say the wrong thing at the wrong time because it has, you know, bigger long-term effects because that's your best friend and that is my husband, you know? So, um, I like it's good to be close to your partner, though. It is and good. For the record, I, I would like to play with Megan, okay? Oh. So, she's... Never mind, I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> Change the subject. <laughs> New question. New question. <laughs> New question. Let's 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 spin up the queue. See what else comes out. Okay, uh, more couple stuff. Never mind. <laughs> um, all right. So, okay, right, rather, this is actually for you. It's actually something I'm really interested in in terms of um, your play style. So, most pickleball players, including your wife, use a two-handed backhand. Um, this seems to give most players more control, more power in some cases. I actually use a one-hander. I've been reluctant to switch over. But I'm, I'm curious why you chose to stick with the one-hander, um, the pros and cons it presents, and then whether you ever see yourself switching over uh, to a two-hander. Yeah, great question. Um, Tell them how you switched so in tennis. Tell yeah, when I was 12 or so, I think 11 or 12 in tennis, at that time, you know, I'm 39, so, like, that was back in the day when – you know, you got Sampras, Rafter, uh, I don't know who, Pialine, all these guys, you know, but like 80, 90% of the guys that were top in the world had one handed backhands. So my coach, my genius coach from Sweden and my mom were like, you need to change to one handed backhand. I was like, okay, I don't know. Are you sure about this? I had a good two hander, like, you know, and uh, if I could have the crystal ball there, I would say, no, I'm going to stay with my two handed backhand. But, you know, I wanted to play at Wimbledon, and they were like, you can't play at Wimbledon unless you have a one-handed backhand, you know? So it's going to be better for your volley and all this stuff, and which is true in some ways. It helps with the volley, helps with the slice and the touch and the feel and the strength and all that on one hand. But I think two hands better. For the modern tennis game, I think it's better, especially, like, for return and stuff like that. Um, and then for pickleball, especially in singles, I do think it is a big advantage to be able to pass with two hands on that side. You have guys like Jay. I think Jay DeVilliers is a little bit of a, uh mm -hmm. outlier. Yeah, a little bit of an exception. His one-hander is really good, like weirdly good. Like he hits it, and I'm just like, how did he hit that shot? Like, And so I'm working on my one-hander, but if I could ha have a, a good two-handed passing shot like Julian Arnold, like most of these guys, Rafa Hewitt, all you know, these guys, Federico, I think that would be a pretty big advantage, but I just – at my age, like, it's really hard to teach an old dog new tricks. I, I don't know if I can go back to when I was 11 years old and develop a, a two-hander. It's just really awkward for me. So I've been trying to work on my one-handed backhand been trying to just be like a one-hit wonder, you know, bam, and then or drop it more, you know, hit the angle. Yeah. And actually, my one-hander's gotten a little bit better. Like, you'll see I've hit a couple passing shot winners and – it totally demoralizes my opponent because they're like, yeah, this guy's backhand sucks and he just passed me. And then I'm like, yeah, that's right, baby. <laughs> so keep coming to my backhand. But, that's uh, I but yeah. That's not how we played you guys. I said, keep hitting his backhand. And then I was like, yeah, wait. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, uh, but yeah, I think the backhand is a liability, obviously, but I try to run around it as much as possible. If I could just be like, poof, I have a good two-handed backhand, for sure I would do it. I know Jack Foster, he's been working on his two-hander like he normally had one. But yeah, you can see that the two-hander is better. Megan's backhand is unbelievable. Um, I have Megan's backhand. I'm telling you right now, 
like Ben Johns would not be triple crowning. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. But uh, but you know, I just don't have it. So I'm gonna keep working on my one hander um and just try to get it as good as i can but i would say yeah i would I, if i'm like telling people coming up and pick a ball work on that two-hander you know because you see like james ignato which these guys that have that backhand dink roll they can roll it and then they can speed it up whenever they want and they can counter with it i mean it's just it's such a big advantage to have that be able to put that extra hand on there yeah so couple couple more quick questions um and this one is is a little bit more selfish on our end because we have this pickleball academy and so i want to ask a coaching related question you guys i mean riley you're a college tennis coach you guys both do clinics and teach a lot of people um we run these clinics with you know 20 to 30 adults and i just wanted to ask if you guys had um any any recommendations for drills or games um, that you think would be really, really effective. Think about 2-0, 2-5, 3-0 level players. So we're not talking about, you know, top, top notch, but we're not talking about brand new beginners. Um, any drills or games that come to mind that people should be doing? So our number one game that everybody ends up just loving, and I, I get messages after our camps, um, be like, hey, we took this home with us. Everybody loves it. It's Dingles. Do you guys oh, play yeah. Dingles? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, so we play. Yeah, we'll play dingles. We play dingles. Um, we personally like even yesterday when we were drilling with Millie and Mike, we were out there playing dingles. Yeah, it's we, a great warm up game. Yeah, it's just, cross board. You can do down the line too. Yeah, and so just uh, adaptations of dingles. We we love playing that. Um, and then we play a lot of skinny. Sure. I think skinny dingles. Um, there's uh, you know opportunities there to play a straight ahead, working on your you know straight ahead attacks. That's what um, I, uh, we talked a lot about. Two up, two back is good for clinics. You know you get like you can even do it like king of the court. Like you get one team up at the net if you want to have like six people on a court, and then the two you have four at the back, two of them playing at the back, and then right. they're challenging to get over stuff like that. Um, I want you to try this game. Megan doesn't like it in pickleball. It's called cadence. Okay, cadence. It's the best game. Ever. We did it in tennis. You have you can do it up to like twelve people on a court. The best way to play it is four versus four. Okay, so you have four people come up. I think we're gonna have to send them a video. Two versus two playing doubles, and you can feed it wherever you want. If you win the point, you stay. If you lose the point, you get out, and then the next people on your team feed it in right away as however they want, and then you play out the point. And if you get three points in a row, you score a team point. And so you do like four versus four. It's doubles, but you're on a team of four versus another team of four. That game is awesome. I can show you. I can like teach you how to play it. But um, for a clinic setting, if you have limited courts, that I mean, in tennis, that game was so fun. It was huge. I used to do it with my college teams. You can do it with any level, really. But it's, it's really fun. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like we, we enjoy coaching pickleball. Like we've, like people ask us which one do we enjoy coaching more. And we We've done so many Nike camps and tennis and, and private lessons and junior academy. Like I coached a high performance program. Um, we, you know, we worked for the USTA as national coaches. So uh, we feel like we've done a lot of tennis, but for some reason, pickleball, coaching pickleball clinics and camps, is just like, it just has a different vibe to it, a different yeah, feel to it because people um, are just are very, very open to like, you know, how do I figure this out? Like I, I'm they're constantly trying to problem solve and, and I feel like giving them opportunities and putting them in different game scenarios, like dingles, even though they've never heard of it before, it kind of opens up their pathways of like learning something new, a different structure, a different game, even when it's a little bit confusing at times, as soon as they get kind of grasp it, they're like, oh, this is, this is great. There's another, you yeah. know, another way of playing pickleball. And, and, and they can uh, all play with each other, which is cool. Yeah, and they can take it home. I found, I found pickleball people are more are more coachable than tennis people because yeah. a lot of pickleball people, you know, a lot, not a lot of them, but some of them haven't played a lot of competitive sports and stuff. So they're going into these well, clinics. General, yeah. Like, and they're they're going to these clinics, like people. tell them, you know, like I'm a sponge, like tell them, you know, and I love that as a coach. Cause I'm, cause then I can really, you know, in tennis is just a little more traditional. Sometimes people have been set in their ways and you're trying to tell them something and they're like, well, what about this? Like, I've heard it's always like this. I'm like, well, that's fine. You yeah. know, but if you, you know, if you want to be more yeah. open to coach, you're like, I absolutely you know, agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope, you know, I hope people, yeah. my, my, our tennis academy doesn't, doesn't hear this, but I, I agree with you. I prefer coaching yeah. pickleball tennis. And I think, um, you know, pickleball allows coaches to even be more effective 
per se than, than a tennis coach. And that's because in my view on it, uh, you know, coaching comes from here, um, comes from the things you say, the things you think. And when you are coaching pickleball, the majority of the time you're able to just walk around and talk and think and engage and you're allowing players, players are hitting themselves, you're facilitating and you're sharing as a tennis coach my experience, I'm pretty much feeding the whole time. So I'm already limited by 50% because I'm focusing on feeding and feeding well. You know, maybe I'll say something while, I, while I'm feeding, but really it's more in between. Whereas pickleball, you're pretty much able to spend most of your energy on just, you know, connecting with your players. Um, so I, I totally agree. Um, what are your thoughts on like the closeness? Like, you know, we're only like 14 feet yeah, apart from closer, each other yeah. at the kitchen line. I feel like also that closeness of the court it just gives it a different vibe, whether like whether I'm on the baseline at a tennis court, so the baseline on the other side feeding a ball and like rallying with them. It's I feel like it's a more impersonal. Like I I just feel like in, in pickleball, I feel like I, I get to know the player a lot better, not just because you know because it's the closeness. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, two two quick questions to end things. One. How long do each of you guys see yourselves playing pickleball? I feel like you probably have to answer as a couple. I don't know if one one's like 10 years. No, no, no. I have 30, though. I mean, I don't know. I, I wanted to let that transfer. I'm actually really curious to see how you guys navigate that answer because this has been very funny to, to kind of... It's funny because I, um, I feel like I put I sometimes put like an expiration date. I've, I have in the past uh, last couple of months. Or back in December when we were negotiating contracts with paddle companies and tours and everything like that, I had this like expiration date in mind for some reason and I expressed it to Ryla and Ryla's like are you serious like yeah you're 35 but so what like you know like yeah. I, I had this like you know two-year number in my head I'm like I feel like that's where two years I'll be th 37 at that point and I feel like there's a whole other wave of players coming and of tennis players of college players like 20 year olds and all these things and and Ryla's like you're just getting better I mean like you know like you're you're still on the rise you're you're still if evolving your game like you're you're fitter than ever like you're you know all these things and I, he's like don't put an expiration date on you on your ability like don't do that and and so um so that kind of like you know it helped me to kind of think about it but in our mind I think you know we for sure we're all in for two plus years I mean like hopefully five years hopefully 15 years until I make it to the senior pros you know I think I that's mean, we're realist. like we know there's a lot of good players coming up we're not as young as they are and we have a little bit of a shelf life, but that's the beauty of pickleball that I talked about earlier is they have the senior pro tour. If you think about it, I'm only 10 years away from that. So for me, it's like, I don't want to go out there and play pro and be like, just getting my butt kicked every week, not winning a match ever. That's not really fun for me. I don't think that's gonna be fun for Megan. We're extremely competitive. So as long as we can be competitive in there and we're still enjoying it, I'm going to still want to play. I'm not someone, I don't really have an ego. Like if I'm going to, if I, if I'm getting my butt kicked and I go down to 5-0, I can be more competitive. I would be happy doing that. I just love competing and playing and, and doing all that. And then when I get to 50, I'll get back in the pros or whatever. Right. But I think right now, you know, I'm competitive. I'm not on the podium, but I feel like I can get better still. Like I still like, I feel like I'm still getting better and, and competitive. And like I said, I think it's, it's still super fun for us. So we don't want to put a time limit on that. Um, and I'm going to, I, I want to play senior pro, like I'm already like looking forward to that. I mean, you know, I'm, re I'm retired. I'm in an RV and I'm ready to play senior pro. Let's go. Let's so go. My beard is getting gray. I got gray hair coming in. I'm ready. To I'm go. It. Then it's really deceiving. They're going to come in and think that you're, you're, you're 60 and they'll say, Oh, okay. This is going to really be a joke. And you just wipe them off the floor. I'm going to do the Kyrie Irving stuff where he dresses up the old guy and then goes out and takes people to school on the basketball court. It's going to be me and Pippa. Exactly. Yeah. Um, no, that's awesome. And I don't, I, I agree. I don't think there's a need to per se put a, a shelf life or an exploration date. Cause then you subconsciously start thinking, Oh, okay. I'm already getting closer. It doesn't really matter. You start getting a little more stressed, you know, leave the door open. If it closes, it closes, but you know, you guys are both getting better. I've seen you guys both. Play. So, you know, like, so there's different perspectives on that. So for me to give myself this two year, like opportunity for me, I'm actually more eager to go hard right now. So like to go harder because I feel like I don't have as much time as 10 years or, or 15 years. Like most players feel like when they're 22. Um, whereas like for me, I'm just like, I need to make the most of right now. Like when I'm training, I feel like I'm more like more driven because I don't want to waste the practice. I don't want to waste these three hours that I'm on court. I don't want to waste this tournament or I don't because I can play it again next year. Like I don't want to waste the opportunity of going to the US Open this year and being like, oh, well, I have another 
you know, I've got, I can do it next year. Maybe next year will be better. So I feel like I'm more like driven for that perspective because I know it's not forever. Anything can happen. We know from our life experience of like, you know, tomorrow's not, you know, that's not promised. So, um, so I think for, for me, that mentality, I'm, I'm going after it. I'm going after it hard. I'm training hard. We're training hard because this is it right here, right now. I mean, I think that's the whole, like, um, like I, I agree with what you're saying as well. I think like one of the most, not to get too deep, but like one of the most important things anyone can do in life is to know, know themselves and know who they are and yeah. to, to gear your thinking and your actions around how you're going to be able to push yourself the hardest. And you're right. Maybe rather it's the complete opposite. If I put a two year time on it, I'm going to be more stressed, not going to play as well. I want to keep it open. You want to keep it shut. Then you both have the opposite mentalities. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of life. We're all different and we all have different body types. I mean, one food is not right for everybody. Different body types respond differently. Same exact thing with ideologies and competitive, you know, spheres. So I, this is a pickleball show. I don't want to get too deep, but um, be like water, you know, Risley. <laughs> exactly. Right on that level. <laughs> the water, you know, you have to empty your cup before you can be filled. And the water takes the form of whatever it's in. Be okay. the water. Okay. Right? Uh, there you go. <laughs> hey, you got philosophical, so. <laughs> You're right. Hey, we're going to start. We're here philosophizing. <laughs> Pickleball. Pickleball and philosophy. Like we'll, yeah. we'll start a whole new podcast on Pickleball philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> I like um, it. All right. Last question. Got to end with this because I always ask everybody this question. The most important question for both of you. Why do you love Pickleball? Ooh. great question i love doing it with him I, we we even we, though she we, broke up with me and mixed up no we, we we're enjoying this pickleball life together and the reason we started playing pickleball was for us to do something socially again together That's he i was working as insurance agent and he was working so coaching and so we had this two separate lives um and then we at the end of the day we don't really find a lot of tv shows we like together so we're like we need to find something that we got to do together and we were looking for something uh, outside of the house and and it became pickleball you know and it's uh, that's what I I love about pickleball it's like I get to do this as a joint thing and and uh, meeting other people but in particular doing it with my people Jay come say hi real quick come say hi <laughs> JR yeah, too. <laughs> yeah so I think that you know it's a family thing that's the, probably the number one thing for us is like we can do it as a family our kids play um you know like doing it with her i think it's pickleball is an awesome sport i mean you go out there what other sport or people you know from any age you get people out there from like six to like 80 playing competitively thousands of people on the same venue i mean it, it's amazing like you know these people that hate on pickleball i'm just like stop hating and look at it i mean it's it's amazing like you have people that are that would literally be on the couch, watching TV, maybe even suicidal, depressed, whatever, that are out there exercising, playing, socializing. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. So pickleball is is uh, is a gift from God that we've all we all have to just take advantage of and and use it. And whether you like tennis or pickleball, whatever, you can play both. I mean, I'm a great example of that. So I think um, spread the love of pickleball uh, for us. It's it's our family adventure. And one day my dream is to be playing uh, senior pro with my kids, you know, mixed double, split age, whatever, you know, all of us playing together as a family. Like, I just think that would be amazing. So I think pickleball has been an incredible blessing for our family. And we're just so happy that we've found it. It's been awesome. So. And we're incredibly blessed to have you guys on the show. This was really fun. This is actually super awesome. I love talking to you guys yeah. and your story and, Hopefully we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you at the U.S. Open and you know some other tournaments in the future. Thanks so much for coming Sounds on. Good. Thank yeah. you so much. I'll see that lefty for you soon. Yes, you will. Bye. <laughs> see ya. Bye.